there's a significant cost to manufacturing electronics. There's also a lot of costs when you come to uh, the end of life. People think that things are recycled in a clean factory and that, that's not the way it happens. Most of the time our electronics are exported to the developing world where they mine them for raw materials. Uh, a typical cell phone has 17 times as much gold per weight as gold ore that you'd mine out of the ground. And so people can make a lot of money by mining our electronics for raw materials. The problem is they do it in ways that are not environmentally sustainable. They use really nasty chemicals like cyanide and sulfuric acid to get the gold out of electronics. And they don't have any sort of workplace safety uh, you know, mechanisms in place because they don't even know what that is. They're just trying to make a living. I've spent a lot of time traveling throughout the world looking for how people use technology, how people uh, are able to repurpose older technologies, and I've been really inspired by people in the developing world. Specifically, I've spent a lot of time lately in Africa, I've been in, in uh, Egypt, I've been in Kenya, looking at how people reuse technology. Most of the well pumps in, in the surrounding areas around Nairobi, they've got an electric pump and they're, um, and it, you know, for irrigation, and when the pump burns out, they take it to this girl, and she actually removes all the copper coils and rewinds the motor. Which, if you've ever done, like, this is something that we don't do anymore. You have a motor that burns out, you throw it away, and you get a new motor. And they're actually effectively reverse engineering these motors, figuring out the exact patterns, how many, how many uh, coils, exactly what the diameter of the wire they have to use. And very successfully, I mean, they're repairing like 20, 30 pumps a day. That's an area where the developing world is ahead of us here, where I wouldn't bother rewinding a motor because it's just way too much of my time. In the developing world, they will. And that's actually really exciting. They're sort of showing us that there is a better way, that we can really care for our things. I like to say that if you can't open it, you don't own it. And that's something that I've learned from people in the developing world. Like, they don't consider repair something that you might do. They consider repair something that you have to do because it's the only way to survive. You see uh, a lot of very advanced medical equipment that's sent over to Africa. People talk about how they donated this high-tech MRI machine to a hospital in, uh, in Nigeria. And that's great, but if you're not also providing them with the semiconductor engineer that can replace the capacitor when it goes bad on the power supply because they have really dirty power, then they're going to have a $5 million MRI machine sitting there doing nothing, which is what I've seen over and over and over again. And it's usually very simple components. It's a capacitor that's gone bad. It's a modular uh, power board that could be replaced. It is immoral for us to be providing the rest of the world with technology that we've developed without also giving them a path for maintaining it. So that's the mission of iFix is to try to level the playing field by getting as much of that information as possible online in a useful format. Because we really want to teach electronics engineering to people who have never had the chance to work at some of the awesome companies that are here.